Hello everyone and welcome. And if you could just put your name and where you are today in the chat, that would be fabulous. Oh, Norway, Dartington. Oh, Rachel from Allahees. Lovely. Brighton, Somerset, Plymouth, Exeter, Buckfastley, New York, Germany, Dartmoor, Totnes, Black Torrington, Broad Hempston, Plymouth. Wonderful. My brother lives in Plymouth. Oh, that's brilliant. And also, I wanted to wish everyone a happy spring. It's the spring equinox today. And so it's that, you know, I think we should give ourselves a pat on the back because we've made it to spring. And today is the day when the North Pole starts leaning towards the sun again. And it's kind of like the, the, the sun comes across and from the southern to the northern. And it's very a time of balance. Essex, brilliant. Shrewsbury, Portsmouth, fabulous. So. Today it's a Zoom webinar, so you don't need to worry about, like all the cameras are off, all the mics are off, so you don't need to worry about muting or anything like that. Um, oh, France and Normandy, wonderful. And yeah, so we're going to do a few different exercises today. And it's a time really just to surprise yourselves and you've turned up and that's enough. You know, so just take any pressure off yourself to try and create something brilliant today and just have the aim in your mind of um, Virginia Woolf called it finding the diamond in the dust heap. So we'll do lots of writing and hopefully you'll get some sequins and gems and surprises. Um, and the first thing I wanted us to do is just to get into our bodies a little bit. So I'm going to ask you to stand up and if you've got your headphones on, if you could just unplug them for this bit and if you can find a space. So we're just going to do a little stretch and get into our bodies. So I'll show you how to, to do it and talk you through it. So I'll make sure that's, there we go. So what I want you to do is Stand, and I want you just with your right hand to reach up and your left foot will peel off the ground. And I want you to imagine you're reaching for some fruit and it's really high up in the tree. And it could be some grapes with the sun on them and they're still warm or it could be a spiky durian fruit or a soft peach and really reach for that fruit and feel this nice stretch and then you're going to pick your fruit and bring that arm back down and then we're just going to do the same with the other part of our body so reach up into another tree and really get that fruit and if it needs two hands you can grab it with two hands and then bring it down and uh, then give yourselves a little shake like a wet dog that's coming from the rain. That's perfect. And then if you can come and sit back down. And today we're going to be writing about where we come from, but I want us to think about that in terms of the long span of time. So when you're sat back down, I just want you to tuck your tailbone in a little bit. And we all share a common ancestor with bonobos and chimpanzees and orangutans. So I want you to imagine you've got a bit of a tail there, like a little monkey's tail that you're just tucking in. And our shoulders, I want you to think of them as wings almost that we're just tucking in for now while we do some writing and just take a, a deep breath here before we begin. That's perfect. 
And if you would like to, if you could put in the chat what fruit you ended up picking or fruits and just imagine they're still on the table with us because we're going to come back to those fruits a little bit later. A mango, great lemon, lovely. Jackfruit, wonderful. Oh, this is the most elaborate fruit bowl I think that's ever existed. Oh, wonderful. Brilliant. Guava and damsons and lime. Brilliant. Um, pomegranate. So that's fantastic. Oh, wonderful. I have this lovely memory of picking grapes from a vine and they were still warm. So I picked some grapes and then I think I reached for a peach. So I've got some grapes and, and a peach. Um, and I'm going to begin by welcoming you with a, a poem. So I'll just share my screen with you. Okay. And this is a poem by John Berger. And it has that that feeling of deep time, because we know some of where we come from in our living memories, maybe some relatives that we know about, but we also have this like long, long tail of, of, of the planet, of evolution. And so this I feel connects with that. When I open my wallet to show my papers, pay money, or check the time of the train. I look at your face. The flower's pollen is older than the mountains. Aravis is young as mountains go. The flower's ovules will be seeding still when Aravis, then aged, is no more than a hill. The flower in the heart's wallet. The force of what lives us outliving the mountain. And our faces, my heart, brief as photos. So that's by John Berger. And he, he used to live in France in the mountains. And then I just wanted to share this artwork with you. And it's by Nikolai Olstrop, a Norwegian artist um, who lived in the mountains as well. And he made lots of, I think he grew five varieties of rhubarb and made lots of rhubarb gin. But what he do sometimes is in his paintings of the mountain, he would put his friends faces in profile or he'd paint friends into the paintings. Um, but these here, these kind of hay stooks, I think they're called, they're trolls. So um, I want us to think about ourselves as coming from a landscape as well. So I'm gonna move that. And my, one of the things that I feel is our, our first home or the home that's with us wherever we go is our bodies. And so I'd love us to, to the first writing exercise we're going to do is about our bodies. And you could think about it as a landscape or you could focus in on, on one part of your body. And I'm going to share some poems by Rupi Kaur. And she has a collection called Homebody. Look down at your body. Whisper. There is no home like you.
Our backs tell stories. No books have the spine to carry. And then one last one, and then we're gonna start with um, an exercise. I dive into the well of my body and end up in another world. Everything I need already exists in me. There's no need to look anywhere else. So if you can have your pens and paper, or you can write um, straight onto the computer if you prefer that, you can write in any language that you want. If you prefer to draw, you can draw whatever comes up creatively, just run with it. And that might not be something from an exercise I've set, which is absolutely fine. Just let whatever comes along carry on really. So what I'd like us to do, first of all, is to think of a body of water, or it could be a cave, just something very deep in a landscape. And it could be a pool or a lake or a well. You know, sometimes I think about the throat as this very deep aquifer or well that goes right down to our hips. So just um, jot that down. And then whichever one you've chosen, imagine how you would then move down into that. So if it was a valley or the foot of a mountain, you might descend down or you might dive down. Or you might parachute from the sky, you know, or bungee jump down, whichever movement you feel or swim down. So just jot down a movement of how you would get to this deep place. And then I want you to choose maybe just one part of the body, or it could be a few, and just describe it almost as if it was a landscape. And one of my favorite parts of the body is this little bit of the thumb and it has a name this this kind of like crescent and it's called lunala which means little moon and i think so many terms of how we describe a landscape the brow of a hill they are they are already rooted in place so i just want you to take a few moments and look at a a, a bit of your body and yeah just describe it as if it was something else
And then if you could just finish what you're writing. And I'd love to hear which bit of the body that you ended up writing about. If you could put that in the chat or how you ended up getting doing a deep dive into the body. I think I would have liked to parachute. And if you have any questions at all at any point, Christina, I saw you raised your hand, feel free to put them in the chat. Oh, lovely tongue. Wow. Wonderful. Oh, lovely. Wriggle down the passage of my gut. Oh, the hand is a delta. Love that with the channels of water. Yeah, the knuckles. Oh, and the ear is deep furrows of mud. Wonderful, really wonderful. And um, so for this next exercise, um, you should be able to see on, um, I've just sh shared my screen. And this is an artwork by Yoko Ono, which I saw, I think over a decade ago. And I remembered it is, I remembered the title as, this is not a line, it's part of a larger circle. But the actual title of the artwork is, this line is part of a very large circle. And to us, it just looks linear, but you know it's part of this whole arc and, and branch of things going right, right back. And when I was preparing for this workshop, I had a line from a poem in my head, which is called Ulysses, and it's by Alfred Lord Tennyson. And the line is, I am a part of all that I have met. I am a part of all that I have met. And I just love the idea of the accumulation of who we are from ancestors, from places we've lived, from people we've known and haven't known or experiences that we've had. And I would love us to begin now. And we're gonna meet one or some of our ancestors. So I'm going to give you a few prompts and then we're going to look at two poems and then we're going to shape that into something. Might be a poem, might be a song, might be a story and um, we'll just see where it goes. So the first thing I just want you to jot down is a fruit. And it could be the fruit that you picked, or it could be any other fruit that you want. And then I want you to think of something you'd make, something you'd make with your hands. And then I want you to think of something that you hold up or offer to someone with your hands. Kind of offering for this encounter with an ancestor. And then I'd like you to think of a season. And just write down 
which season you've chosen. And what kind of weather, and what kind of things would be around in that season? What the day might feel like in that season? And next, I'd like you to think of a place outdoors. And just write down that place. Go anywhere you want. Somewhere you've been, somewhere you haven't been. Could be a glacial landscape. Could be a hot stream in Iceland. Anywhere at all. A redwood forest. And lastly, I'd like you to think of an emotion or a feeling. So now I'm going to share two poems with you. And they're by a Macedonian poet called Nikola Madjarov. And his family and he himself lived through many wars. And his and they're a family of, of refugees. And Madjarov actually means refugee, his surname. And his grandfather changed nationality three times and he never moved from the house he grew up in. But the borders kept changing and the territories kept changing. And so I'd like to, to, to share two poems and then we're going to do an exercise using these poems as our structure. And just have in mind that encounter with an ancestor. Shadows pass us by. We'll meet one day. Like a paper boat and a watermelon that's been cooling in the river. The anxiety of the world will be with us. Our palms will eclipse the sun and we'll approach each other, holding lanterns. One day, the wind won't change direction. The birch will send away leaves into our shoes on the doorstep. The wolves will come after our innocence. The butterflies will leave their dust on our cheeks. An old woman will tell stories about us in the waiting room every morning. Even what I'm saying has been said already. We're waiting for the wind, like two flags on a border. 
One day, every shadow will pass us by. Before we were born, the streets were asphalted before we were born and all the constellations were already formed. The leaves were rotting on the edge of the pavement. The silver was tarnishing on the worker's skin. Someone's bones were growing through the length of the sleep. Europe was uniting before we were born. And a woman's hair was spreading calmly over the surface of the sea. So what I'd like to do now, um, we'll have about 10 minutes to do this, eight to 10 minutes. And I'd love you to, to write about a meeting. And it doesn't have to be a human ancestor, it could be going right back before we were Homo sapiens, before we were the species we are today. And you can use the poems, you know, you can even take the first words of each line to help you shape yours. Um, and just see where it takes you. Just and um, I'll put these poems in the chat now so that you have those as well. And yeah, we'll have about 10 minutes.
So if you could just finish what you're writing at the moment, if you could just finish up the line. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to think of our own beginnings and where we started. And I think throughout humans history, it's one of movement and migrating or being nomadic. And um, so less and less we stay in the place we started. Sometimes we do. And there's so many reasons why we leave, why people leave. And I'd love to hear where you began, you know, where you spent the first days of your life. So if you're happy to, if you could put in the chat where you started, which place you started in. And I'm gonna share with you where I started. Oh, Cambridge, lovely. Dorset, Italy, Brighton, Devon, Sunderland, oh, Greece and Germany, Kent, Fleetwood, Calgary, Germany, Bournemouth. Wonderful. And Aldershot, Hampshire, lovely, Surrey. Totnes, that's great. So I started off in Shropshire in the West Midlands in a small uh, working town that was part of the Industrial Revolution. So the town exists because there was work and then the work dried up, but people had built their houses with bricks, so they stayed. So it has this feeling of Whereas we would have just pulled up the tent pegs and moved on, people stayed even though the industry had left. And Shropshire is one of the most landlocked countries in England. But I always, always, always loved being in water and being underwater. And I think there's where we there's where we come from. And then there's the elements of things where we come from that can sometimes be even more influential on us than, um, than the actual place. So this is me writing underwater. And that child that loved being, always, always would swim under rather than at the surface, I ended up kind of bringing a notebook under the water and writing poems under there about the different species and things and I, I've always felt very connected with water but I would love you to think about what element you feel kind of a kinship with could be fire could be earth um, could be air could be water so I want you to have that in your mind if you want to you can put it in the chat it would be great to see what elements we have I'm going to have a little look earth and soil nice Water, water, everywhere. Oh, so much water. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, especially wind, Lena. Mud, glorious, glorious, Rachel. And fire and fire. Fabulous. So, oh, rivers and the sea. Yeah, sometimes we need a bit to balance. Like I think I need a bit more fire. I'm quite water, but I think I could do with a bit of like, you know, a bit more fire sometimes. That's wonderful. So we might weave, if you want to, we might weave these elements into um, something that we do later. I think that would be quite, that would be wonderful to do that. Um, and we're going to look now we're going to write about home, about our beginnings. And 
I've got two poems here. And this next one is by Nicola Majorov again. And then I've just got an extract of a poem from Warsanchire, which is also called Home. And I want us to kind of go back to where we started. The place, the walls, the details that, the first details that come to your mind are probably the right ones to write about. And the more detailed and precise we can be, the more it will come alive. So we'll read these and then um, we're going to do a writing exercise and uh, I'm going to do it with you. Um, so I'll just read these to you now. Home. I lived at the edge of a town like a street lamp whose light bulb no one ever replaces. Cobwebs held the walls together and sweat our clasped hands. I hid my teddy bear in holes in crudely built stone walls, saving him from dreams. Day and night, I made the threshold come alive, returning like a bee that always returns to the previous flower. It was a time of peace when I left home. The bitten apple was not bruised. On the letter, a stamp with an old abandoned house. From birth, I've migrated to quiet places and voids have clung beneath me like snow that doesn't know if it belongs to the earth or to the air. And I, one of the things I love about this poem is you've got that really rooted start where you really feel like you're there. And then you have the returning that many of us do in our lives. We go, we come back, we go, we come back. And sometimes in life we find our place, we find where we should be, and sometimes we're still exploring where that might be. And I feel a little bit that that's what that is at the end, and that can be fine. We can belong to both earth and air and find ourselves somewhere in between. And one of the things the next poem connects with is that the idea of where we leave why we leave, sorry, and how we leave, and also what we're going to do in our writing is leave everything behind that we don't want. So we'll we'll do some some writing on just anything you want to leave, just leave it there. Um, and so I'll read this extract. It's a longer poem. It's it's absolutely amazing, and Warsan is an incredible poet with really startling juxtapositions of, of images and ideas. Home. No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. You only run for the border when you see the whole city running as well. Your neighbors running faster than you, breath bloody in their throats. The boy you went to school with who kissed you dizzy behind the old tin factory, is holding a gun bigger than his body. You only leave home when home won't let you stay. No one leaves home unless home chases you, fire under feet, hot blood in your belly. So that one is really the flight. Um, and we can be fleeing from current things. We can be fleeing from historical things that we don't want anymore or that don't serve us. So this is what I'd like you to do for this exercise. I'd like you to think about where you began and to describe a few elements of that. So you could start with I lived at or you know, I, I started in, 
Um, so think about the home, the walls, um, the little details. Um, yeah, the place, the place where your home was geographically, like with Nicola's poem, it's at the very edge of the town. Um, so the place where it was, and then I want you to think about maybe why you left or how you left or when you left. And then I want you to think about what you left behind or what you'd like to leave behind. And in this, you can just leave it all there. Um, so I'm going to put these prompts in the chat for us and the poems. And I think we'll have about eight minutes for this. Um, and I'll just check we haven't got any questions. Absolutely, um, Jack. So I'm going to put at the end of the workshop, I'm going to put all the names of the poets and the poems so that you so that you can find them all and also the artists that we looked at. Um, so we're going to have about eight minutes for this as well. With all these things, we're just going to make beginnings and then something that we feel excited by, we can then pick up and, and carry on. So I'll put the prompts in the chat now and good luck.
So if you could just finish up what you're writing. Give your hands a little shake. My hands get quite tired when I'm doing this. So before we do the next exercise, I want to share a quote and a true story with you. And the quote um, is from Salima Hill. And she says, the only energy we have is the energy of our own lives. But sometimes autobiography is not true enough. In order to be ruthlessly accurate, it is sometimes necessary to fictionalize. So basically, this is giving us all permission to make things up. And um, to some details might be true, some might be completely fictional. It doesn't matter. Um, it's the truth that comes through. And sometimes that comes through um, more directly, more surprisingly, if we make things up. And the story I want to, to share with you is a story that a friend first told me about about 10 years ago and um, it's about um, a tribe in Namibia and in this tribe they, there's no punishment for people and what happens is when when a woman decides to have a child she goes off into nature and she sits at the foot of a tree and she listens for that child's song. And she waits and um, the date of the birth of the child is actually the day that that person decides they're going to have a child. And so she sits and she listens. And then when the song comes, she goes back and she teaches it to um, the man she's going to have a child with and they learn the song together and then she sings the song to the baby and she teaches it to the midwife and the other people and then when the baby is born they sing the song to it and they keep singing the song to it and they teach it um, its song our song and if any point in their lives something happens where they've kind of gone off their path, everyone gathers around them and they sing their song to them to remind them of, of who they are. And I remember hearing this and I just found it so beautiful. And what I'd love us to do is think of the song of ourselves and what we'd like in it. And as I said, completely make things up if you want to. This could be like a mythic origin story of where you come from. And, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to base this on Dean Atter's poem, I Come From. So every line, every sentence we write, we're going to start with I come from. And that's like our pole that we're putting in the ground, I come from. And um, I'm going to read the poem to you and then we'll look at how it's come together 
and we might match that in some ways or we might just go off into into something else um so i come from i come from shepherd's pie and sunday roast jerk chicken and stuffed vine leaves i come from traveling through my taste buds but loving where I live. I come from a home that some would call broken. I come from DIY that never got done. I come from waiting by the phone for him to call. I come from waving the white flag to loneliness. I come from the rainbow flag and the Union Jack. I come from a British passport and an ever ready suitcase. I come from jet fuel and fresh coconut water. I come from crossing oceans to find myself. I come from deep issues and shallow solutions. I come from a limited vocabulary, but an unrestricted imagination. I come from being given, oh sorry, I come from a decent education and a marvellous mother. I come from being given permission to dream, but choosing to wake up instead. I come from wherever I lay my head. I come from unanswered questions and unread books, unnoticed effort and undelivered apologies and thanks. I come from who I trust, and who I have left. I come from last year and last year, and I don't notice how I've changed. I come from looking in the mirror and looking online to find myself. I come from stories, myths, legends, and folk tales. I come from lullabies and pop songs, hip hop and poetry. I come from griots, grandmothers, and her story tellers. I come from published words and strangers smiles. I come from my own pen, but I see people torn apart like paper, each a story or poem that never made it into a book. just contains so much doesn't it that poem it's like an epic saga um so we'll see that dean starts with food um which links so much to place and especially early childhood memories and things so we might want to start with maybe listing some foods and then maybe listing some characteristics that we have some behaviors um, things we've done and you could also list songs that you connect with who you are it can be anything at all landscapes places and I'd love for this one for us to include the element that we felt or elements that we felt connected with and if every single line you can just start I come from and don't worry about too much about what you're writing just keep it flowing like a waterfall of I come from, I come from, I come from, and just see where it takes you. And then what I'd love us to do once we've um, once we've written is to choose one one of our lines of I come from and put that in the chat. Just one line. And we're going to make a collaborative poem of where we all come from. Um, so we've got about eight to ten minutes to do this. Um, if you get stuck, just keep writing and then just keep keep going. And then, you know, sometimes we break through or we turn that corner and write as quickly as you can, you know, just see where you end up. And I can't wait to, to hear where, where you where you end up and where you came from.
So if you're ready, you can um, begin to read back through what you've written. You can just underline any that you like. I'd love you just to choose one. And then if you can, um, or if if you'd like to, you can type it and put it in the chat. Um, and the chat button, if you're on a PC or laptop, is just next to the Q&A at the bottom of your screen, a little speech bubble. Um, and at the top of your screen, you'll see a thing that says view. If you click on that, you can change to speaker view. So I'm going to start reading these. I come from derivative portraits painted by minor. Oh, I'm just going to make it a bit smaller and scan up. Here we are. I come from derivative portraits painted by minor provincial artists of obscure county gentlefolk. I come from tank tops and ballads. I come from fires cooking beans by the beach bend of streams. I come from broken glass. I come from stolen electrical evenings and cat burglar style bedroom returns. I come from special guest china and builder's mugs. I come from a yellow laburnum where I spied on the lane. I come from under the round table and up the faraway tree. I come from folk songs and gossip. I come from concrete and clay beneath my feet. I come from singing on long car journeys to make home arrive sooner. I come from a memory about to repeat. I come from pork pie, salad and bread and butter. I come from sea spume and pearlescent shells. I come from Yorkshire pudding and blue remembered hills. I come from grass grooves in my knees. I come from disregarded recipes. I come from cold polenta and sugar on a plate. I come from a glass of milk after school. I come from a history embedded in this landscape. I come from whole grain patties and never from meatball sauce. I come from rope swings and getting stuck in the mud. I come from being stripped and stripped and stripped only to find a truer self. I come from an exiled Calabrian running, Calabrian, sorry, running a pub in Portsmouth. I come from the first time you looked at me too long. I come from white picket fences and clover. I come from shelling peas at the kitchen table and top of the pops. I come from weekend trips to forests, lakes and mountains. I come from dust. Oh, sorry, let me just come back up. I come from dust on the prairies. There we go. I think I've got so beautiful. And somehow it all holds together as a poem. Just make sure I haven't missed any. No, we're end. Yeah, it looks like we're ending with dust on the prairies. Incredible. So beautiful. And I just felt it did, it all held together. Really, really beautiful. And what you can do with this is 
you can go back, you can write more and you can, like Dean has done at the end, branch out to other people or you could branch out to where you're going to. This is where I come from. I'm going to. So homework, if you if you want homework, is to carry on with this and just to say, I'm going to, I'm going to. Um, and you could even do I am. So you could do it where you are, where you are now. And I wanted to just read two last poems to you. And the first one is by Leyland Bardwell. And she was an Irish poet who died just a few years ago. And she lived quite a bohemian life. And she'd swim in the sea every day. She was a you know, real person who was fully in life and living. And then I'm also gonna share a fragment from Raymond Carver. And it was one of the last things he wrote before he died. And the reason I want to share these two pieces with you is because we kind of started writing about our bodies. But we're so much more than a body. Um, and if there's time, I'll do one, I'll share these and then I'm just gonna ask us to do one last thing together. So. So this is A Single Rose by Leyland Bardwell. I have willed my body to the furthering of science, although I'll not be there to chronicle my findings. I can imagine all the students pouring over me. My God, is that a liver? Are those brown, cauliflower, are those brown cauliflowers our lungs? Yes, sir, a fine example of how not to live. And what about the brain? Alas, the brain. I doubt if this poor sample ever had one. As with his forceps, he extracts a single rose. And this is Raymond Carver. And did you get what you wanted from this life, even so? I did. And what did you want? To call myself beloved. To feel myself beloved on the earth. I'm gonna read that one last time because it's short. And did you get what you wanted from this life, even so. I did. And what did you want? To call myself beloved. To feel myself beloved on the earth. And the last thing I'd like us to do is the, to think of one thing like Leyland Bardwell's single rose, that isn't something physical, but something we have inside us that makes up so, so much of who we are or, or one aspect of who we are. And this could be many things. And it could be that it's a tulip or a lily or a rock. You know, it can be a physical object, um, but it could also be hope optimism, love, whatever we feel. And if you'd like to, I'd love you to put in the chat one of the things that you feel is in you, that if something happened, like in Leyland Bardwell's poem, which is a kind of dissection of the body, what would people find? What's in you that, that is one of the things that makes up who you are?
Generosity, a river that flows, a cat's whisker, pebble, a nugget of inertia, a green leaf, a spring, a cresting wave, a lot of space, a wand made from birch, a piece of dark clay, a feather, you mind? An acorn. Beautiful. And um, so I want us to, for the rest of our day, our first day of spring, or oh, a piece of woven cloth, beautiful. Have our thing, our object, have our fruit. And I'm going to put now in the chat all the artworks and the poems that we looked at. But I just want you to all give yourselves a massive pat on the back because it takes courage to do creative things. And especially this type of thing where we're mining through our lives, you know, we're doing that deep dive and it can bring up lots of different stuff. So I just think you gave yourselves your this this time and you really went for it. And, you know, the, all the different elements you, you've you've created and starting to create are beautiful. So I just want to say a huge thank you from me and from Dartington. And they will send around a feedback form, which if you'd like to fill in, that just helps us improve and do things better in the future, which is what we want to do. But from me, I just want to say thank you to you all and, and well done. I've just put in a long list of um of poems it's going to put one more link in which is not at all related to what we've oh caddis fly case amazing not related at all to what we've done but it's this thing called joy and dance that happens every morning at 8 45 a.m in the uk you just dance to one song it's wonderful so i'm going to put a link to that um but thank you everyone have beautiful weekends Enjoy the spring. <laughs>